Hey friends, Mr. P coming to you with uh, our overhand throwing lesson. This is a pretty fun lesson for Mr. P because um, we do some special things in terms of uh, a very real guest teacher from this dimension. Um, but first things first, um, this overhand throwing lesson is a skill that you'll be able to use for life. And we, we talk about um, key terms on accuracy and following through. Um, accuracy is getting something to go where you want it to go. Accuracy is getting something to go where you want it to go. So whether it's getting a ball to go uh, exactly where you want it to or getting, I don't know, things done the way that you want them done, that's being accurate. Um, and following through, as we've spoken about um, in other lessons, is making sure that you do the full motion, not just half. So um, we could liken this to um, anything, really. A dancer jumping up and then fully landing nicely, softly, um, gracefully. Or uh, let's say a violin player doing a full bow stroke as opposed to a full bow stroke as opposed to just a partial one. Um, you know, and following through is done in so many different ways. It's done in sports with a beautiful movement. Maybe a basketball player shoots and they follow through, all right? They don't just do a half shot or something like that. You'll never really see that. Um, so there's there's follow through and different techniques for everything, but we're going to be working on fully following through with an overhand throw today. Um, and the harder you work on the skill, the more and the, the full technique of following through um, the better that can actually help you, or the more that will help you at following through on other techniques. So really do your best to pay attention and work hard on this skill to get it really well. Um, I think it's going to be a, a big difference for you overall in life. So um, what we'll need for this uh, before we start, Mr. P's assigned activities, what do you need? Oh yeah, what do you always need whenever we're going to do anything? Um, you need someone's permission. You need someone's permission for the materials, so you need to ask your parents uh, if they you can use a certain ball and where you're going to use it. For example, this is not my home. This is my father-in-law's home. So when I said, hey, father-in-law, can I throw a ball at your house? And he said, not exactly. I'm going to need you to put some cardboard up, and I'm going to need you to put it on the shed outside so that you don't uh, scuff up my walls or anything of that nature or break anything. And I said, that sounds like a good point. I guess that's what we're going to do. All right. So um, being very aware that we have to have our parents' permission or our guardian's permission of the type of ball that we're using and where we're using it and how we're going to use it um, before we actually get started is, is perfect. So if you want to pause the video and go talk to your, your parents or guardians now about what ball you're going to be using and how you're going to use it, that would be a good idea. You'll want a ball that uh, ideally has just a little bit of bounce to it. It can have more um, you know, if you have a baseball or something, you can use that, but you'd have to have an appropriate netting for it. So I would just say some kind of ball that will bounce off something that you can hold with one hand and throw is key. So for KM1, uh, we are supposed to basically be able to work on the technique for overhand throwing. Um, and you can try to execute it in these drills that we're counting as a game. Um, but you're not expected to execute it in, let's say, like baseball or um, any kind of sport where you'd throw a ball uh, at this point. Now, by second grade, if you were playing some ball throwing games, you would be expected to be able to execute this overhand throwing technique uh, correctly in gameplay. Let's say you're playing dodgeball with your friends uh, somewhere or some other kind of throwing and catching game. And you should be able to execute it in gameplay. All right. Mr. P has a special guest. Now, this, this special guest um, is not coming from a different dimension. This is actually um, an, a, a, a Major League Baseball player for the Kansas City Royals. Now, I don't think he's playing any more active. Um, you never know if he could go back out there someday. But um, Mr. Uh, David Henniger... Uh, has helped out Mr. P with his throwing technique for the past two years, ever since his son Luke Henniger um, started coming to Odyssey. 
Luke will help his father demonstrate uh, some of the skills that we're working on for these overhand throws today. We are so lucky to have him. So everything you see him doing, I would try to mimic it just like he's doing it, just so you can get that that extra major league baseball throwing technique down. So so let's use this time to focus on the technique and try to do it exactly like he does it. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and focus on Mr. Henniger's uh, videos that he's put together for us with his son Luke. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey guys, Coach Dave here and Luke. You say hey. Hi. We're making a video on throwing today to teach Mr. P's gym class. So, four important steps in throwing. The set, the back or hand to the wall, okay, with a strong front arm, release the ball, and then the follow through, okay? So Luke's gonna take you through the four phases, come on this way a little bit, um, four phases of throwing here. So set, right here, okay? Hands to the wall, go ahead, hands back. Notice this arm is up, nice and strong, that's your power. The ball is facing behind you, not facing this way, okay? And the release is the throw. And then last but not least, the follow through, okay? Guys, follow through is most important because it'll save your arm, okay? If you just throw the ball and stop, number one, you're not gonna be as accurate. And number two, you're gonna hurt your arm. Hey guys, there are two quick points that I wanted to make to you just after looking at Mr. Henniger demonstrate Luke starting out on his knee with that overhand throw. If you look at this first picture here, you'll see a young girl who's just basically doing a nice smooth throw. She's taking the arm by her side, the ball by her side of the throwing hand, then she's taking it all the way back, allowing her elbow to bend some, and then she's stepping with that opposite foot forward to throw. All right? Or she's already got her feet staggered in, and she's just, as you can see in Point six, she is ending up with opposite elbow to opposite knee. Now in this next picture, this is a professional pitcher, all right, or a really uh, good high level pitcher who is throwing this ball super hard. Notice how he picks up his knee high on the first step. And the second one, he has a huge step. The third step, he's leaning on that front foot a little bit more and his elbow is super bent because he is whipping that ball. And on the fourth step, see his opposite elbow going down toward knee, that is a hard throw. You don't always need to throw the ball hard, and that's more a prof professional pitcher, all right? And so it's cool to throw the ball hard if you want to, but even just a nice, slow, easy, smooth throw like this where you don't have to bend your knee that much is cool too. All right, so we're going over the, the four steps in throwing, okay? The set, hands together, breaking the hands down, hands away. So ball facing away from where you're throwing, then the throw or the release, and then the follow through, okay? We'll bring it all together here. So hands together, back, release, and follow through. Okay, now Luke's gonna do a couple drills to show you the progress there, from snapping it right in front to all the way through the throwing motion.
Hey, hey guys, it's Mr. P uh, trying to come at you with a quick tutorial on basically the games that we're going to play uh, slash the drills. And these are drills that you can make really fun in repetition, doing the drill correctly and repeating that drill multiple times and not expecting yourself to be perfect, all right? <laughs> Three things, all, all in one, um, will we'll help you get better at this. So making sure that you, you practice one day and don't get too frustrated with it if you don't get to where you want to that day and then just keep on coming back to it um not not pressuring yourself too much to be amazing then i think you'll you'll really get better at your your overhand throwing so <clears throat> mr p has created a target it's um it's not the best target in the world but i've created something and basically punched some holes in it so that i could tie it to my uh, father-in-law's shed um so it's just a basic target and i know it's kind of hard to see but you know, I have my 50 points and my 10 points on top and my 5 points on bottom. And I'm just going to play a game of myself trying to hit all those, but mainly that 50-point center um, at different distances to make it a little bit more challenging. And I'm working on my accuracy, all right? My accuracy when I do that. So um, drill number one is probably from about 10 feet away is what Mr. Henniger recommended. And um, I also made sure I made sure that I had permission from my father-in-law on the ball that I was using and where I was using it um, because if I used a baseball or something hard against basically just a shed or a wall in his house I could I could break something um, and it's not just a baseball so please ask your who come on who are you supposed to ask that's right you know it your parents your guardians um, on which ball you can use and we're gonna use it I'm trying to get a ball with just a little bit of bounce here, all right? And um, so the first drill is on my knee. All right, I want my opposite knee of my throwing hand up. So if you can see me right here, my throwing hand is my right hand. I have my left knee up, all right? Um, I'm going to go through just a snap drill. Remember this? So boom, like Luke was doing. I'll put my hand um, underneath my elbow so that it's basically level with my shoulder, not too low, all right? So it doesn't have to be super high. And from here, I just want this natural action of my elbow bending and then my wrist actually uh, whipping, all right? So, and following through. Following what? Through. All right, so I'm facing that target straight on and I'm just trying to get it to go straight at that, that, that target point I want and I hit it and to get it to roll back to me in an even cadence. This cardboard is a little bit bent so it doesn't bounce evenly for me, but um, you can see Mr. P, right, I'm just here trying to get it, pick it up, and keep on snapping. And every time I want to make sure that my wrist, this is one of the most important things that the wrist bends and follows through. If that doesn't happen, even if you're hitting the target, you're not getting better. Um, and the way you can really test that is um, if you think that it's too easy from about 10 feet back, just move yourself back and keep on going, moving yourself back to make it more challenging. Right, the next drill, drill number two, is me doing the full throwing motion on my knee. So I'm just gonna say basically the same distance Remember, my opposite knee of my throwing hand is up. I start right here, and I bring my power elbow up. So that's the opposite elbow of my throwing hand, all right, my opposite elbow. So I bring that up, right, and from here, this is uh, position one. Position two is bringing that arm back, the throwing hand back, and keeping this power elbow up. And position three is doing a slow and smooth motion right now. I'm just trying to get that ball to hit that target where I want it to hit. I should not be throwing this super hard. Yes, you can make it more challenging and go back further, like Luke did, as you hit that target, but my recommendation is just to feel the full motion, end up with opposite knee to opposite elbow, all right? And, and try to hit your target point or close to it every single time. So one, two, three. Remember, super important, all right? When I throw, my arm does not stay straight like a catapult. It does not stay straight. It bends and articulates. My shoulder loosens as I throw. My shoulder loosens, 
which loosens my elbow, which loosens my wrist, so it kind of becomes this wavy motion. So try to get that cool dance motion down with your throwing arm especially, all right? And see if you can let your shoulder or let your elbow bend as you start to throw, and then let that wrist follow through and whip, and then the opposite elbow goes the opposite knee, all right? Also try to make sure that your nose and your head, all right, are facing the target. So my eyes should be looking at the target too, but my nose and my head should be in line with where I want that ball to go. All right, so right here. All right, so position one. All right, power elbow up. Two and three. And I'm trying to get an even cadence. Again, my, my target is kind of uneven, so I, if I hit the, the if I don't hit it super accurately in the middle, it's going to bounce off to the side. I want to get that ball to bounce back straight to me every single time and just get a ba 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 beat, a beat, a rhythm, a cadence to how I'm throwing this to make it a, a fun drill and easy. All right, so one, two, three. One, two. All right, all right, and I keep on going, and if I'm not getting the ball to go where I want it to, I have to speed it up or slow it down. That's right, slow it down. All right, last one is the full drill of standing up and throwing. So I'll take it back a little bit further, but not that far back. And all Mr. P's doing is trying to hit his target, but he's not going super fast because he's not a very accurate thrower. Mr. P is not a great thrower. So... I have the ball in my throwing hand, right? Start out here in position one, right? And then position two, and position three. Nice, I hit my target. I might want to step back after a while, but, or I can just keep on going here, slow and smooth, getting really good at the throwing motion. One, two, three, one. Two, three. All the while, slow and smooth. My head and my nose are in line, facing that target straight on. Um, and opposite elbow to opposite knee at the end. And my joints are kind of rolling as I do it. So see if you can get all those going and um, see if you can come up with a game, maybe with your parent, your guardian, uh, whoever you're staying with, if they can play with you or just play by yourself. But Try to only do this for a little while, uh, a few days a week, a few days a month, and it will really up your throwing game, all right, your overhand throwing game. If you can just get these smooth motions and just remember these cues, all right? So I hope you had fun with this video, and I hope it helps you. I miss you guys, as always, and um, maybe I'll see you around uh, somewhere in this Newcastle County area. But uh, stay safe, and, you know, let's get through this. Hopefully we, we get together in the... Um, the, the early fall. All right, guys. Uh, miss you. Pee out. All right. Bye.